नमस्कार दोस्तों आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन देयर एंड इन टुडे सेशन इन कॉफी विद कंसेप्ट सीरीज वी विल डिस्कस सम शॉर्टकट्स अबाउट द निक्वेस फ्लोट सो दिस शॉर्टकट इज वेरी हेल्पफुल इन फाइंडिंग द नंबर ऑफ एनसर्गलमेंट ऑफ माइनस वन और ओरिजन एंड चेकिंग द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द ऑफ द सिस्टम क्लोज लूप सिस्टम सो विल सी दैट कंसेप्ट इन 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 टुडे सेशन okay so this is my introduction you can uh, join me on byju's exam prep platform and you can start your preparation with me i teach almost every subject in electrical engineering and let me tell you guys uh, we are uh, we have already started uh, this series uh, for nilit and isro for especially for computer science students from 12th of uh, june so you can recommend your juniors you can tell your friends also about this series and uh, we are going to start one uh, uh, one series trichopedia so in this uh, trichopedia series we will give you uh, some ideas some direct tricks within one or two minutes to solve a problem okay so those tricks you can apply and you can uh, get the advantage so uh, this series is going to start from 15th of jan uh, 15th of june again okay so you can again watch this series it will be uh, benefited you will be benefited now you can see that uh, there is a free workshop uh, on 13th of june now it might be possible that uh, you are watching this uh, video on after 13th june so what you can do is uh, on every monday or tuesday we have free workshops so you can register for the free workshop for the next workshop you can register okay so uh, let's move on and uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe our channel it's important guys and uh, please press the bell icon so that you get the notification whenever uh, my sessions will be live or in recorded form okay so let's start let's understand uh, the concept of nyquist plot so there is a formula and i call that formula as 511 okay if you know how to calculate this 511 you can check uh, the stability of the closed loop system and uh, the number of encirclement of minus 1 okay in the nyquist contour so the formula for 511 is 180 into z minus p minus pw by 2 this is the formula that you can apply and directly calculate the stability using this formula now you must have not studied this formula but let me tell you let me first clarify what is the meaning of z here p here and pw so z is the zeros of zeros of 1 plus gshs it means actually it is the poles of the closed loop system so this z will tell you about the stability of the closed loop system okay what is p p is the number of poles number of poles of 1 plus gshs or gshs in right half of the s plane in right half of s plane so how many poles are lying in the right half of the s plane and poles of what poles of 1 plus gshs or gshs because we have same pole for gshs and 1 plus gshs we have the same poles that's why this p is the pole of 1 plus gshs or gshs in the right half now what is pw pw is the number of pole of 1 plus gss or gss on the imaginary axis okay on the omega axis or w axis okay number of pole number of poles on imaginary axis on imaginary axis okay this is my pw so if somehow you know this formula if you know how to calculate this 511 you can calculate z from here once you get this z you can comment on the stability okay we know that if the system is stable let's let's come to the next slide i know that 511 is equal to z minus p minus pw by 2 let's say i i call that the system is stable okay system is stable if the system is stable then z has to be zero okay z has to be zero the number of poles uh, number of closed loop poles in the right half of the s plane has to be zero okay so for stable system this z has to be zero it means the 511 has to be 511 has to be minus of p plus pw by 2 into 180 so it came out to be negative it means 
if 511 came out to be positive, let's say you want to calculate 511 and it came out to be positive. So directly you can say that the system is unstable. System is unstable. Using 511, if 511 came out to be positive, you can directly say system is unstable. If 511 came out to be negative, then only the system may be stable. You have to check, okay? But if 511 came out to be positive, then the system is unstable. Now the question is, what is this 511 and how to calculate this 511, okay? For that, we have to understand. Okay, let's say I have my GSHS. GSHS is given as 1 divided by S into S plus 1, S plus 2. Let's say my GSHS is this. And I want to check the closed loop system stability, whether the closed loop system sta is stable or not. And the number of encirclement of minus 1. We need to check in the quiz plot what will be the number of encirclement of minus 1 and the closed loop stability. Obviously, to check that the number of encirclement of minus 1, you need to draw the Nyquist plot. Okay. Now, let us take a right half contour. I have the right half contour like this. Okay. This is my S plane. S plane, we know that there is one pole at origin. So, there is one pole lying at origin. Okay. So, if I take the contour, then the contour may be taken in two ways. Okay. The contour can be like this. The right half contour. It can be like this. Okay. And also you can change the direction. Okay. So, I am excluding this pole at origin. There is one more way to to take the right half contour and that way is you can include you can include the pole at origin okay so this is the pole at origin we know that the pole of this gshs lying one pole lying at origin okay so what you can do is you can include this pole at origin so this is the second way of taking the right half contour okay now in both the cases let's see whether the system is stable or not okay so stability will not change whether you are taking this contour or this contour. Closed loop stability will remain same. The only thing is the number of encirclement of minus 1 will change. Now we need to check what is the number of encirclement here in this case and here in this case. So for that we need to plot the Nyquist. Uh, we need to draw the Nyquist plot. Okay, In GSHS plane we have to map this contour in GSHS plane. In GSHS plane, we have to map it. But the problem is, what is the problem? We have to map it entirely. I mean, it has four parts. One, two, three, and this four. On this axis, it's J omega. Omega varies from infinity to zero. And then, this is a circle. This is a small circle. Okay? So, I write it like this. Epsilon e to the power J phi. Now, this epsilon tends to zero and phi varies from pi by two to minus pi by two. And then again, j omega, omega varies from 0 to minus infinity and then uh, there is one more contour r e to the power j theta, r tends to infinity, okay, and theta varies from minus pi by 2 to plus pi. So, actually it has four parts. So, if you want to map this entire contour, closed S plane contour, in GSHS plane, you have to map entirely, I mean four parts you have to map. It's very lengthy. It's very difficult. So what you can do is you can map this part only. Okay. J omega. Using this part only you can check all the answers. Okay. How to map this part only? It's J omega. So you have to replace S with J omega. Now if you are replacing S with J omega, it will become 1 over J omega into J omega plus 1 into J omega plus 2. Now omega varies from infinity to 0. On this axis, omega varies from infinity to 0. So, we have to map this and omega is varying. So, we have the magnitude of this function and the phase of this function. So, what is the phase of this function? Phase is minus 90 minus 10 inverse omega by 1 minus 10 inverse omega by 2. Okay. So, this is the phase of this function. This is the phase of this function and obviously, we have some magnitude. Magnitude is 1 by omega root of omega square plus 1 omega square plus 4. Okay. So that is the magnitude and omega varies from infinity to zero. So the contour, the, the, uh, so what I need to do is I need to map this. To map this, we need to know polar plot. It means the polar plot I need to draw. 
So if I draw the polar plot, you can see that when omega tends to infinity, the angle is minus 270. Minus 270 is this axis. I'm measuring ang angle from this axis, okay? So it's negative angle, it means clockwise angle, minus 270. So when omega is infinity, the angle is minus 270 and magnitude is zero. It means the plot will look like this. The plot will look like this. And since you are moving from infinity to zero, the arrow has to be in this direction. Okay, at this point, omega tends to infinity. At this point, omega tends to zero. Omega is equal to zero. When you put omega equal to zero, the magnitude will become infinite. It means the distance from the origin is infinite. Okay. I hope it is clear. So this will be the polar plot. And minus one will lie here because this point will be at this. This is my omega PC phase crossover frequency as omega PC at omega PC. The magnitude will be less than one. You can check it. You can check. You can plot. You can do the. You can uh, do the polar plot. Okay, and you can check that this omega p this this magnitude is less than this minus one. Okay, uh, this magnitude is less than this this magnitude. Okay, so for this particular question, you can check it. I have already checked. So this point will be will be here. Okay, so this is the polar plot. I have mapped this side. So I don't need to map this side or this side or this side now. With this. Con with this mapping only, with this polar plot only, I can check the stability, closed loop system stability, as well as the number of encirclement of minus one. First of all, we need to understand how to calculate this phi one one. So let's try to understand how to calculate this phi one one. So phi one one can be calculated. This phi one one can be calc calculated with respect to this point. Now, if you are moving from infinity to zero. How much angle is subtended here? When omega is infinity, this was the line. And if you are changing omega from, if you are coming from omega equal to infinity to zero, okay? So you are moving up, upward, you can see that these points, okay? You are moving upward and then you are again coming downward. You are again coming downward, okay? So you are moving upward and then you are coming downward, okay? You are coming downward. It means you started on this axis on horizontal side. You come came up upside. I mean, the angle is increased in uh, in anti-clockwise direction, and then you again come to the horizontal line. It means the net angle subtended is zero. Up to this point, the net angle subtended is zero. From this point to this point, the net angle subtended is zero. Now you are going downward. If you are going downward, then the angle is increasing in angle is increasing in clockwise direction. You know that angle is increasing in clockwise direction. In clockwise, and how much angle is increasing? 90. Because up to this point, up to this point, net angle subtended is zero. You you just increased and then you decrease. Now from this point to the, the, that infinity point, the net angle subtended is minus 90 because you are moving clockwise. That's why I am taking minus 90. It means this 511 is minus 90 here. Okay, so this is how the angle 511 is calculated. 511 is the angle with respect to this minus one and the angle subtended by the Nyquist, uh, by this polar plot. Okay, if omega varies from infinity to zero. So this is my 511. So it came out to be minus 90. It came out to be minus 90. Okay, now you can apply this formula. So let's, let's see the 511 came out to be minus 90 and it has to be 180 into Z minus P minus PW by 2. Now, minus 90 is equal to 180 into Z we need to calculate because Z will tell you about the closed loop system stability minus P. P is the number of pole in the right half of the S-plane. How many poles are in the right half of the S-plane? No pole. No pole in the right half of the S-plane. So, it's 0 minus PW. PW is number of pole on imaginary axis. How many poles are on the imaginary axis? One. One pole is on the imaginary axis. Okay. So, you can put it here and z will be 0. Now you can see that z is 0. It means the closed loop system is stable. Closed loop system, closed loop system is stable. Okay. Closed loop system is stable. I hope you got the idea. So the closed loop system is stable. We got the idea. Okay. Whether you are taking this contour or this contour, the closed loop system is stable because we are not looking this side or this side. It doesn't matter. We are only looking the j omega axis and omega varies from infinity to zero. Now remember, I am taking a omega infinity. If I if you are taking omega varies from zero to infinity, 
and you are you are going from 0 to infinity and if you are looking phi, phi 1 1 you have to take minus sign here if you are inverting the the arrow sign the formula will change you have to take minus sign here that's why I'm not changing this formula and uh, I'm varying omega always from infinity to 0 okay and there you can calculate this phi 1 1 once you get this phi 1 1 you can apply this formula and check the closed loop system stability now the question is how to check the number of encirclement so I, I hope you got the idea how to apply this formula phi 1 1 what is phi 1 1 how to check this z and p and p w okay now let's look at the next thing next thing is number of encirclement of minus 1 okay so now it's time for number of encirclement number of encirclement number of encirclement of minus 1 with this formula also with this 511 formula you can check the number of encirclement we got the z we know that the number of encirclement of minus 1 will be n will be equal to either z minus p prime or p prime minus z now what is this p prime what is this p? p prime is different from this p okay now what is this p prime z we already know that either this formula is valid or this formula i mean using these two formula you can calculate the number of encirclement of minus one now what is this p prime p prime is the number of pole number of pole inside inside the s plane contour inside the s plane contour okay so this is my p prime now you can see that in the first case if you are taking this then the number of pole inside this s plane contour is zero there is no pole inside this contour and z we have already calculated at zero okay so in the first case case number one in case number one number of encirclement of minus one will be equal to either you apply this formula or this formula z is zero and p prime is also zero so there will be no encirclement of minus 1 if you are completing the complete the Nyquist plot here for this contour if you are completing the Nyquist plot here then the number of encirclement of minus 1 will be 0 what about in the second case in the second case p prime is 1 you can see that there is one pole inside this closed contour there is one pole inside this closed contour it means case number 2 in case number 2 p prime is 1 okay now obviously this will give you a negative answer so we the encirclement has to be positive okay so it will be p prime minus z 1 minus 0 so the number of encirclement of minus 1 will be 1 and since it came from p prime it, the, using this formula this answer came it means the pole are in in in, uh, in positive side i mean in, in uh, uh, the first place is for pole it means the direction of this encirclement will be opposite to the s plane contour because in this case if you are using this formula if you are getting n positive with this formula then the direction of the contour direction of the encirclement will be opposite to the s plane contour so we get that in case two we have one encirclement of minus one in case number two we have one encirclement of minus one and that encirclement will be opposite to that since it is anti-clockwise so the number of encirclement of minus one in this case will be one in clockwise direction okay one clockwise i hope it is clear one in clockwise direction okay so you have to be very clear about this concept how to apply this concept and how to check so it all depends on contour s plane contour this in this case also system is stable in this case also system is stable. closed loop system is stable in both the cases but the thing is what is the number of encirclement of minus one the number of encirclement of minus one you can check like this okay i hope it is clear and i hope you understood how to apply this 511 method okay so uh, let's stop it here so this was uh, a small trick of 511 concept okay you can uh, solve other questions also using this concept but this concept is valid only if only if the zeros only if the zeros are less than the pole okay only if the zeros are less than the pole then only you can apply this method if the zeros are even equal then equal to the pole then also it will create some problem okay so you have to be very clear about this concept okay so uh, let's stop it here guys so don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the like button and press the bell icon also 
we have our mobile app so you can install our mobile app also and there also we are taking some free classes so you can join those free classes you can take advantage of the free classes okay so please install it and recommend to your friends also that's all for today's session guys i hope you enjoyed see you in the next session thank you and take care bye